Hi everyone, thanks for joining me for today's lesson on rational numbers. Uh, today's lesson will, um, I know it says math six notes up here, um, but I'm gonna also put that this, there's a lot of seventh grade uh, standards that we'll be talking about today. So uh, you could be in sixth or seventh grade learning about this right now and you're definitely in the right place. For our learning target today, it's I can understand that a rational number is an integer divided by an integer. Okay, so if we're looking at our key idea here, this representation, this graphic is a really good visual for me. Um, you know, we, when you first learn about numbers, when you're in elementary school, you learn about whole numbers. So numbers like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and, and up, right? Then um, in at the end of sixth grade, the beginning of seventh grade, you're introduced to integers, which are whole numbers and their opposites. So negative whole numbers as well, like uh, negative one, negative two, negative three, so on and so forth. And there's another kind of set of numbers that we're going to talk about today called rational numbers. And if you look at the root word of rational, it's ratio. Okay. And if you remember, a ratio is just a comparison of two or more things. So, um, for example, uh, some of the ratios we learned about, a lot of people just think fractions or decimals. So, like, um, things like one half. For every uh, one boy, there are two girls in a class. Okay, you could say that about whatever you want um, uh, for every uh, three people that are cat owners four are dog owners, right? That's just a ratio. Now today we'll also introduce, also introduce negative ratios or rational numbers. So for example, negative 1.2 or negative two thirds, they fall under the category of rational numbers. For our vocab here, it says a rational number is a number that can be written as a divided by b, where a and b are integers and b cannot be zero. Okay. So let's look at a little more vocab and then see some examples. Because you can divide any integer by any non-zero integer, you can use long division to write fractions and mix numbers as decimals. These decimals are also rational numbers and will either terminate or repeat. Okay, when I think of terminate, I think of Arnold Schwarzenegger and the Terminator. Maybe you've not seen those movies before, but to terminate means to stop, right? To terminate means to stop. So for example, 1.5 stops. Negative 0 0.25, it stops, right? 10.625 or 10 in 625 thousandths, it ends. A repeating decimal, though, is has a repat has a pattern that repeats, and it goes on and on and on and on forever. So, if you, you I'm sure you've probably seen this in your calculator, but a very common one is one third. If you take uh, one divided by three, it's zero point three 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 three, and it keeps going, right? So, we can use bar notation to show which of the digits repeats. So, for example. If I wanted to write one third, I would write that as a decimal, I would write 0 0.3 repeating. And that tells me that this three keeps going forever. Okay, be careful with um, situations where two numbers repeat. Here I have 0 0.15, 1, 5, 1, 5. Make sure your bar goes over both the one and the five. Okay, so just a couple examples there of repeating versus terminating decimals. All right, let's try a few of these. Let's write these rational numbers as decimals. Letter A says negative two and one fourth. Okay, so I know that I'm starting with negative two holes. So I'm gonna write that down first so I don't forget that. I have negative two holes. And then I'm gonna put my decimal and then I'm gonna figure out what one fourth is as a decimal. Well, hopefully this is obvious to you by now, but uh, one fourth we can write as hundredths by uh, multiplying my denominator and my numerator by 
25. 4 times 25 is 100. 1 times 25 is 25. So it's 25 hundredths. Remember, two places after the decimal is the hundredths place. So 2, 5. <clears throat> you can also think of this in quarters. 1 out of 4 quarters is 25 cents. So negative 2. 0.25 or negative 2 and 25 hundredths would be uh, our answer there. Okay. Now there's multiple ways to do this. Maybe you wanted to think about this as uh, first, maybe first you wanted to write it as a improper fraction. So you would say 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9. So you might say this is the same thing as negative 9 fourths. And then you might say, okay, this is the same thing as 9 divided by 4, right? 9 um, divided by 4. And 4 goes into 9 twice, which is 8. And subtract, I get 1. And I'd have to include a decimal and an imaginary 0. 4 goes into 1, or excuse me, 10. I forgot to bring down my 0 twice, which is 8. Subtract again, I'd get 2, another imaginary 0. And 4 goes into 25 times. And I know that I had a negative divided by a positive, so different signs gives me a negative answer. And you'll notice I came up with the same exact thing, negative 2 and 25 hundredths. Okay, let's try letter B, where it says write 5 elevenths as a decimal. So um, <clears throat> in this problem, it's not as easy to get our denominator to 100. Uh, so what I'll do in this case is just divide. This is the same thing as taking 5 divided by 11. Now I'll tell you a lot of students mix this up. They write it like this. This is incorrect. Okay. This would be 11 divided by 5, which is 11 over 5, not 5 over 11. Okay. So make sure that your numerator goes inside the long division sign here. So how many times does 11 go into five? Well, it, it doesn't go into five, it goes in zero times. So I need a decimal and an imaginary zero. 11 goes into 54 times, which is 44. Subtract and I'll get six and bring down imaginary zero. 11 goes into 65 times, which is 55. Subtract, I'll get 5, bring down a 0. 11 goes into 50 four times, which is 44. Subtract, I'll get 6, and bring down a 0. Oops, hit the wrong button on my pen. <clears throat> okay, 11 goes into 60. 5 times, which is 55. Subtract, I'll get 5. Right, I'm sure some of you are saying, stop, Mr. Yell, stop. This is repeating. You're noticing that I'm going to get 0 0.454545. And it's going to continue on and on and on and on. So written as a decimal, I would get 0 0.45 repeating. That's my answer. Okay. Go ahead and pause the video here for the on your own section and um, see how you do. Okay, number one, we should get negative 1.2. Number two, we should get negative seven and 375 thousandths, so negative 7.375. Number three, negative 0 0.27 repeating, and number four, 1.185 repeating. If you had any questions on those, please let me know and I can help you out. Moving on to the second example now, we will go the other way. So now we're going to start with the decimal and we're going to write it as a fraction. It says write negative 0 0.26 or negative 26 hundredths as a fraction in simplest form. All right, I know my number needs to be negative and 
I know two places after the decimal is the hundredths. And how many hundredths do I have? I have 26 of them. I'll notice then that I can simplify. Oops, my negative sign disappeared. If I divide my top and my bottom by two, I'll come up with 13 fiftieths, still negative. <clears throat> and that's as simple as it can get. Okay, hopefully that is familiar to you um, and we're just adding in negatives now. So go ahead and pause and try the five through eight on your own here. Okay, for number five, you should come up with negative seven tenths. Number six is one eighth. Number three is negative three and one tenth. And number eight is negative 10 and one fourth. If you need any help with those, please let me know. For the, I think the last example here today, yep, it asks us to order rational numbers now. It says the table shows the elevations of four sea creatures relative to sea level. Which of the sea creatures are deeper than the whale? And explain your answer. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> you know, I think what would be helpful here is, is I see that I'm dealing with lots of different, I'm dealing with different denominators. So right off the bat, it's kind of hard to, um, to compare these. And also, I see that I have a, a decimal. So what I think might be helpful is, is first writing these as decimals. So negative 13 tenths would be the same as uh, 10 goes into 13 one whole time. And how many are left over to get to 13? Well, just three tenths. So this is the same as one and three tenths. And of course it's negative. And three tenths can be written as negative 1.3, right? This is the tenth spot. So I can think about this as negative 1.3. <clears throat> the squid is at negative two and one fifth. Well, I can make one fifth into tenths by multiplying by two on top and bottom. So that's the same as negative two and two tenths, which I can write as negative two point, well, the, how many tenths do I have? Well, I have two tenths. So this is the same as negative 2.2. .2. The shark is, I don't have any holes in the shark. It's just negative 2 elevenths. So to write that as a decimal, I'm going to take 2 and divide it by 11. <clears throat> 11 goes into 2 zero times decimal imaginary zero. 11 goes into 20 once, which is 11. Subtract, I'd get nine and bring down imaginary zero. 11 goes into 90 eight times, which is 88. Subtract, I'd get two, bring down a zero. 11 goes into 20 once, which is 11, subtract, I get nine, bring down zero. You can see it's gonna repeat. So the shark is at negative 0 0.18 repeating for a depth. And the whale is already as a decimal. So negative 0 0.8 or 8 tenths, okay? Um, I see that this number is is two is, is written in hundredths, so I'm just going to add in zero on each of these, so it's a little bit easier for me to to go off of there. Okay, <clears throat> so I've got all my uh, my numbers written as decimals now, and the last thing I want to do is is that I want to write this on a number line to kind of to visualize it a little bit better. I know that I'm dealing with negative numbers here. So I'm going to put zero over here. <clears throat> and then I'm going to try to figure out what should I, 
uh, go by for an increment here uh, to kind of space out my, my numbers. I actually might need to make this a little bit bigger. Let's put zero over here. Um, it's just a guess, I'm not sure yet, but I, I wanna graph it on this number line just to, uh, to kind of visualize it here. Um, my biggest number that I have is, or my, my most, the greatest, uh, let's see, the least is what I'm actually trying to say, the least number, the number furthest away from zero is negative 2.2. Um, and I've got some numbers hovering around. Okay, I, I got an idea. I'm gonna go by uh, four tenths, I think, or maybe by two tenths. Let's see how far I can get going by two tenths. So negative 0.2, negative 0.4, negative 0.6, negative 0.8, and then this would be negative one. <clears throat> I wonder if I'm gonna be able to fit all this in here. I'm gonna add in a few. This would be negative 1.2, negative 1.4, negative 1.6, negative 1.8, and then negative two, and then negative 2.2, negative 2.4. You can see I'm going by uh, two tenths, right? Now let's graph these and see where they fall. So my angle of is at negative 1.3. So here's negative one. This is negative 1.2. It would be between negative 1.2 and 1.4. That's the angler fish. I have the squid at negative 2.2. So negative 2.2, there's a squid. I have the shark at negative 0 0.18. Negative 0 0.18. That's almost to negative 0 0.2. Right there. And then lastly, I have the whale at negative 0 0.8. Negative 0 0.8 right there. That'll be the shark. Oh, excuse me, that's the the whale. And the question says, which of the sea creatures are deeper than the whale and explain? Well, if I'm talking about being deeper, that talks about numbers that are less than or underneath the whale. As I, as I get deeper, my numbers get smaller uh, and further away from zero. So I actually have two. I have the angler fish and the squid, um, both being deeper than the whale. And I think my number line shows a good um, representation of that. So you can really visually see. And the shark is rather close to the surface. All right, go ahead and pause here for number nine to try the last one on your own. It says, what if the elevation of a dolphin is negative one tenth of a kilometer? Which of the sea creatures are deeper than the dolphin? So negative one tenth uh, would be uh, negative 0 0.1, which would be like right here. It says, which of the sea creatures are deeper than the dolphin? Well, all of the sea creatures then would be Um, deeper than the dolphin because they're all to the left or all underneath the dolphin. Okay, that wraps up the first section here for rational numbers in 12.1. Please let me know if you have any more questions and I'll be happy to help. Thanks for checking this video out. I'll see you guys later.